Hey, what's up, guys? We're back with another video, and this video, we're going to be going over variant 1.2. The, um, this is probably the worst chapter. Like, you're exploring this 100%, chapter 2, honestly, is, like, on par with, like, exploring, like, 6.2. Probably easier, but, like, this just... If you don't have a maxed out ghost or magic as a five star, you're just gonna struggle with this. This chapter is just like power gain, power gain, just shoved down your throat. Just some of the worst. Like I got so pissed doing this content, genuinely. So yeah, we're gonna hop into the first quest here. So what makes quest one so bad? Or more just chapter two in general. Well, for one, the amount of power gain in this quest is just ridiculous. There's a global node, which is spite. Everyone loves spite, which is whenever you have a buff on you, you give them power over time, which is fun combined with some of these characters like Hyperion and just all their power gain. Like Green Goblin in this quest, this one and this one, honest jokes. These fights are so annoying because there's so much healing, there's so much power, and Green Goblin specials are not fun time. You're just gonna take damage from the special one, or the special two takes a long time, and you're gonna have to travel. You're gonna have to trigger for this one at least buffet. This one is 100% power gain, so you shouldn't be spam specials against. It's just not a fun time with the healing. Plus the spite, it's just the power for these guys shoot up so quickly. Another two of the problem fights, which I didn't expect to be bad, was Thor Rags, Power Gain, and Spite on this one. And I think it's the same on this one. No, this one's Burden of Might, so it's not as bad as this one. But this one, no, it's still pretty terrible just because of Spite mixed with this Power Gain. It's, it doesn't seem like it'd be bad, but if you happen to miss time a special with this guy, his power just shoots up so quickly, and it'll just get you a special three and just wreck you. And it's, the problem is you take so much block damage because these are variant level opponents. Like, they have such crazy attack. It's like, the the answer for the, this whole chapter is honestly 5-star max out magic or ghost, which I have neither of. So, it's just struggle. Another fight that's pretty bad is this Killmonger. That's just, this is just a buffet Killmonger. So, he's kind of tanky and you're going to take a lot of damage back. Unless I think you have ghost once again. That's just the answer to most problems. And then... This is where the fun and interactiveness begins. Uh, Mystic one. And he has the specials of Iron Man, I think. Which isn't that bad. But the problem is, this node right here, Backlash Pulse. Whenever a buff would be triggered by the attacker, including Dexterity, they would suffer 25% of the defender's attack in damage. And 25% of your power is drained. Basically, what this means is any buff you get, including Dexterity, just does damage to you. And he has Iron Man special, so you gotta swipe back to dodge him. His special one you can block, but you'll take a crap ton of damage. And then your special two is unblockable, so you have to swipe back and take the damage. The literal only two counters I can even think of are Ghost and Magic. Just Magic doesn't work that well. She can one-shot, but it's extremely hard. But if you have Ghost, this fight should be a pretty much just a cakewalk. But like, if you don't have Ghost, honestly, if you don't have Ghost, this fight is just horrible horrible node if you don't have ghost ghost is like the only champ that i could think can deal with this node amazingly could be wrong but this quest is pretty terrible if you don't have ghost so yeah on to the next one now we move on to quest number two arguably out of the three quests this one i definitely has the easiest boss but there are some bs fights leading up to this for one i got this domino with mac uh max masochism not that bad honestly compared to some of these fights the worst fights i found on this quest were this ultron drone because he's immune to stun and he can evade a lot so this is <sighs> ghost basically just don't have ghost you're just gonna struggle i don't have ghost i could have used my force actually i didn't even have a force at the time when i did this so no i didn't couldn't have done this this is ghost if you don't have ghost this one's just gonna have to be just pay through it with units this mephisto's not i mean he, he's pretty bad, honestly. Actually, I don't know. I'm understanding. He's a Mephisto at the end of the day with Arc Overload and Limber. But honestly, those fights are nothing in compared to this thing and this thing. I didn't have Ghost. So I couldn't. Without. Okay, all these fights could be easy with Ghost. But say you don't have Ghost. 
immune to stun Modok. Why? Why is this even a combination? Because Modok's auto block makes it so if you swipe in, attack him, and you use the auto block, then you have to bait out like a heavy or hope he just... Yeah, I think bait out a heavy or special. And when you go back in, you'll get like one or two hits before his auto block mechanic comes up. So it's just really just horrible. I hated doing this. And for this one, he's not stun immune, but he has masochism. So your stuns, they're going to give him heal back, just health back. And these guys are massive HP pool, so it's not really worth it. So it's just, if you don't have ghosts, these fights are just not fun at all. But then we go up to the boss, who has Magneto specials. We've got a Cosmic Drone. With Toxic Splash and Nano Plague. So, for this one, I wouldn't really use any robot characters to avoid Toxic Splash. Oh, and um, Corn well, Cornet isn't that important, but Breakthrough. This is the node that's going to save you in this fight, basically. Just save a lot of time. With Toxic Splash, when he activates a special attack, the defender, it will remove all poisons on you. Because he just gives poisons naturally, like Abomination. They're really weak, they're not really what the problem is. But when he uses special, the poisons will go away. And they'll be dealing 65% of his attack as direct damage. So basically, when you get rid of the poisons, they do a crap ton of damage. What you want to do for this fight that I found really well, or it worked really well. You could use Ghost if you ever, but Magic also works insanely well for this fight. You just need to get to one special too. You might eat like one special attack, but the poison, it won't do enough to kill you. Only one or two um, detonations. But you just get to a special too. You lock him. The breakthrough node mixes with this. And you just have him locked, and you just keep intercepting, and I think you can parry, right? Yeah, you can parry, probably. And you just keep intercepting or parrying or whatever you're doing with magic, and just the armor break node, the, um, what is it, breakthrough node, will just make your damage go up and up, and I think you can kill him with, like, 80 hits. I could be wrong. I haven't done this fight in a while, but it's not that bad with, like, a four-star magic. This is definitely the easiest fight of all of them. It's just you got to get him straight power locked as fast as possible, and keep him, keep him power locked until the fight's over. But out of all three quests, this guy is... Definitely the easiest. So yeah, you BM and you're pretty much done with quest two. Now we move on to quest number three. I haven't even fully explored this one. This one is just terrible. Honestly, this is probably the worst one. Genu like this quest is horrible. The easiest path you, path you can take is definitely this left side one. It's just breakthrough all the way. This this guy, um, what's his name? Hype isn't really a problem if you have like Sim Supreme or just he's not that bad. But this quest. There are some paths that are just genuinely, like, these paths aren't that hard. This Killmonger can be very annoying with aggression regen and empathetic lock. But this mortal also has crazy power gain. Like, he has kinetic transference, and I think, what's the global? The global is also 100% power gain, so just keep that in mind. Everyone has 100% power gain. But then we move on to some of the most fun and interactive fights. You got Electro. On flare so you just gotta nuke the basically this path path right here with these three characters you just gotta try to nuke down but these aren't even the worst fights this guy you're just gonna have to revive I think there's no really way around him you can one shot him with a few characters but you're just gonna take a lot of damage here Korg you can ghost him if you're a sick ghost player I'm pretty sure you got flare so it's not it's decently fun if you get it right on this path just cuz you got flare and this guy's not that bad but then you got the BS fight. This fight makes this quest so just terrible. You have a 100% power gain. What is it? Bane Magic, whose limbo does like 1,500 a hit. This fight is so terrible. I tried it with my 4-star Magic to see if I could just power locker and just win it. I couldn't even get to, like, my special two before I died. You die so quick with these limbos. This this magic is so terrible, but you only have to fight her twice. The final boss, on the other hand, you have to fight three, four, like, five, six-ish times. I could be wrong. This guy. I don't know who designed this fight. This fight is the worst fight. Argu this might be arguably... No, actually, no, not might be. This is the worst boss out of all of Variant 1, I can say. My opinion, this is the worst fight. So, you got 200% power gain, but that's not really the problem. The problem with this guy are these two nodes, Spry and Ghast. Each time he evades your attack, a fatigue debuff is placed in the attacker. And then Ghast mixes it with, while under the effects of a fatigue debuff, your power is drained, 
And if you attack them at all when you have the fatigue debuff on you for the whole 15 seconds, you take 25% of his attack as damage every time they land a hit. And all abilities trigger 20% more often. See, it says... See, I don't understand this note because it says... You just take a crap ton of damage, but it doesn't make sense because it says... Each time the defender passively evades attack, you'll get a fatigue debuff. But you can stun this guy and just heavy attack him, but you'll still sometimes get the fatigue debuff. I don't know if this guy has passive fatigues. Actually, I think that's what it is. I think it's a mix of... Even if you don't let him invade the entire fight, you're still going to get the fatigue debuffs because I think the science drone just puts them on you. So basically, like, this fight is so bad. Like, this fight... The best thing you can honestly do is just get it stacked out, like, Stark Spider-Man. Ultron works pretty well, surprisingly. Doc Ock works amazingly well, actually. And just spam heavy. Just parry heavy. Parry heavy. Parry heavy. You're going to get the fatigue debuff once in a while, and when you get it, just back off. He, you'll, you take a lot of block damage, so you, you might be able to solo it if you have crazy luck, but I... With my champs, I can't solo it at all. You also don't want to use characters with long heavies. Because if you, say, like, for Symbiote Supreme, the heavies, you'll hit the first component when he's stunned. And then the second component, he won't be stunned. So he'll, he'll probably evade and just screw you. And so you got to use champions with quick heavies. I found, surprisingly, a character that worked really well was Ultron. Just because the two regen phases, and mine's a rank 4 or 5 star. He can last a while and do a lot of, get a lot of his. Another great character is Doc Ock. But the only problem with him is his heavy, heavy, his heavy attacks two components. So if you parry and heavy and the first hit gets fatigue, the second one, you'll take a crap ton of damage. With Ultron, he only does one uppercut. So if you get the fatigue, there's no second component to take damage from. You can just back off and play the safe. But this fight just so terrible. Just honestly one of the most terrible fights I've ever seen in my entire life. Him plus the magic just makes this quest just not enjoyable for anyone in the playing this game. So yeah, you beat him. You've a hundred percent. Um, chapter two and variant one. This is probably the hardest variant. And and I don't think I mentioned it throughout the video, but you probably know this. This quest or these three quests, chapter two, you can only use tech and mystic. So when we think about it. The Mystic class kind of just sucks. There's not that many. You just need magic. Magic will carry you if you ever. But, like, if you don't have magic, the whole Mystic class is basically useless to you. And then tech, it's like, just have ghost. If you don't have her, you're going to struggle. It's like there's two characters that can just carry you through this. And if you don't have either of them, you just got to suffer. That's the You just suffer through this if you don't have these two characters. So, yeah. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful of how to get through 100% variant 1.2 and yeah see you guys in the next one we go over the final three quests see ya